Hope you're having an amazing day. It's Mark Wiens in Tokyo, Japan. And I think the best reason to travel is for food and to experience the local culture and local food in a typical day. And so today I'm gonna take you on a Japanese food tour of Tokyo where we're gonna eat a typical breakfast, lunch, and dinner meals that people would uh, eat on, a, on a, just a normal day uh, living in Japan and living in Tokyo. So it's about 8 a.m. It's time for breakfast. First restaurant for breakfast, uh, this is a typical Japanese diner and you come in here, uh, you can get a variety of different dishes uh, and I think this place is actually open 24 hours. Grab a tray and then you can uh, pick and choose whatever dishes you want. One of the reasons I love coming to a diner so much is because they have such a different selection of different Japanese foods, pre-cooked foods. Uh, you, they, they had like a, a whole countertop full of different deep fried foods, but I kept it pretty traditional. This would be a very common breakfast in Japan. Uh, some grilled fish. I just couldn't resist ordering two types of grilled fish with a bowl of rice, a couple sides of pickles, and then miso soup. And what you do, actually some of the food is, it kind of sits and gets cold, so they actually have some microwaves up front. I'm gonna go microwave my fish real fast. I'm gonna zap these fish in the microwave real fast. 30 seconds should do it. Oh yeah, that brings out the, the fish aroma. I'm gonna start with the, the saba mackerel and this is a this is a very common type of fish. It's grilled. Oh, you can just see the, the buttery juices coming out of it. I'm a huge fan. And then it's, it's commonly served with uh, daikon, and this is like a pureed daikon radish. Oh yeah, that's, oh, that's just oily, juicy, fishy goodness. Oh yeah. It's wonderful. And then you gotta, you gotta follow with rice, of course. Mm-hmm. It's good, you know, just just good fish. Um, it's not too salty. It pairs well with the daikon because the daikon is sort of a, a refreshing, refreshing taste to it. Mm. Oh yeah, that's like, it's actually kind of sweet and a little bit salty. Um, that kind of kind of works as a garnish for the whole meal. Miso soup and there. Oh, I got a hanging leak. I also got some eggplant just because, well, just because I love eggplant. Oh, mm-hmm, mmm. Has a nice ginger flavor to it. And that just, as usual, the reason I love eggplant so much is because it just melts in your mouth. Okay, next fish. And again, this is a grilled fish. It's a quite a long, long little fish. Mmm. Mm. That fish is a little bit drier than the Sapa mackerel. Um, still very good. It has that kind of almost tuna dry texture to it. Either way, either fish you, you, you take, it's a good choice. They do have some seasonings in the center of the table as well. In the center console, you have some soy sauce, some pepper. I'm going in for the chili flakes. Probably my favorite thing on this plate is the classic, the, the Saba, the grilled Saba mackerel. It's so, I love the texture of it. I love the the oiliness of it. Put that with some daikon and onto my, my rice with chili. Mm. What a combination. I just love the butteriness of that mackerel though. Mm. It's a, it makes a wonderful breakfast. Breakfast was excellent. I feel ready to start the day. And this is just a very typical Japanese food diner. You can get a selection of different food. This particular diner, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's open 24 hours a day, so you can come here at all times of the day and eat a, a simple but filling meal. You see people from all walks of life in there. That was a fantastic way to start the day. That breakfast held me over nicely until lunch. And for lunch today, we're in Ginza, which is one of the central business districts of Tokyo. 
and we're going to a restaurant which looks like it's a, a traditional place. It's an old restaurant, a real classic, and I can't wait for lunch now. It's down this small little alley. This is the sign for the place right here. Oh, it's Ebi hure. Ebi hure. Sashimi? I think it's called Sanshuya, but this is a really, really cool place. Uh, it's, it's pretty packed at lunch, but we got the last two seats and we got here at 11.30, so I think they just opened and they are already packed. Um, they specialize in especially uh, mostly seafood and fish, and then they have a chicken soup here. Arigato. Sashimi. Arigato. Okay. This restaurant is absolutely amazing, and we ordered some of their lunch specials here. Uh, I didn't. We just we just talked with the friendly auntie here, and she kind of just ordered for us. But we got some of their specialties. It looks incredible. I think this is my new favorite place in Tokyo. I can't even. I'm I'm at one of those stages right now where I'm so excited. I can. I don't even know what I'm talking about. Okay, we gotta get started eating here. Something that they're famous for is their chicken soup. Even though most of the the food here is is uh, seafood. Look at these chunks of chicken. Okay, I'm going right in for that. Oh wow, that's hot. Oh wow, that is incredible. That tastes like roasted chicken soup. It's salty, it's so pure, and that chicken literally melts in your mouth. Oh, that's like the cleanest chicken soup I've, I've tasted in a very long time. This is a beautiful, another beautiful plate of fresh sashimi. Look at those chunks, just those slices. And then there's some fresh wasabi over here on the side. I'm gonna take some of that wasabi, put it onto that. Look at the thickness of that chunk of tuna. Oh man, a little dip in the soy sauce. That's the texture of a slab of butter, but so much better tasting. There's zero stringiness in that whatsoever. Yeah. It's so thick and so like stringy. It's almost like crab in the inside there. And they also have a sauce here that you will know, add to this. Oh, oh well. And for the final dish of lunch, I think this is fish as well. Look at that, it's just so meaty and steamed. It looks like it's steamed. Oh, that fish is, is the texture of, of butter again. Oh, that just melts in your mouth. You can taste all those fish oils. Wow. It's so like light and fluffy. That is impressively fresh and clean and just the texture is insane. Let's go back around to the soup. That's one of the most tender pieces of chicken I've ever had without it being mushy. Just look at the size of this piece of tuna. That is a huge, thick slice. Okay, arigato. We're just coming out of the restaurant. Wow, oh, that's one of the, the best meals I've had in Tokyo, hands down. That was impressive. That is the type of like home cooked Japanese food meal that like you would dream about. The sashimi was unbelievably fresh, straight from Skiji Market, I'm sure, this morning. Uh, the fried shrimp were, were like some of the meatiest, like almost crab tasting shrimp that I've had. The chicken soup, oh yeah, the chicken soup, not even a seafood dish, but I, I don't even, I don't even, it's almost unexplainable how pure and how clean and how like perfectly saltily addictive that was. And the chicken, that was literally like chicken that melted in your mouth. It's, it was unbelievably soft and tender without being mushy whatsoever. Yeah, I wanna quickly say thank you to Yuko for recommending this spot, uh, saying that this is a traditional place that I needed to try. That was just awesome. For dinner, we headed over to Shibuya, a busy business and shopping area of Tokyo, to eat at a popular after-work izakaya serving yakitori. Right now, crossing over Shibuya Crossing. This is one of the world's busiest pedestrian crossings. Uh, and I'm on my way to go eat at a yakitori restaurant, which is a Japanese grilled uh, chicken restaurant.
we just made it into this yakitori restaurant. This place is so cool. And uh, I was lucky, they, they actually have one, they have two tables back here, but most of the seating is all bar counter seating. But since I'm with my family, I'm glad they had an open table, so we're sitting at the table. Although the, the bar counter seating would be the, the ultimate experience here. But you can just smell the aroma of grilling chicken in here. Um, they have a... Uh, arigato. Thank you. Uh, two, yes please. Two. Two courses. Yes. Arigato. Uh, they have a couple of menu courses, which are the omakase, which the chefs decide and just give you a course. And we went for course A. That is the main one. It includes a bunch of things. Oh, lime. Lime then soy sauce. Okay, the surprise, the first course on the omakase menu is, is chicken sashimi. So normally just about anywhere you are in the world, you want to make sure that your chicken is cooked, fully cooked, cooked all the way through. But Japan is the one place where they take such care of their chickens and at, at a, especially at a, a special chicken, only chicken restaurant like this, where they source their, their chickens from, um, from reliable sources and it's a certain breed organic chickens that they know where they're getting their chickens from you can eat chicken sashimi and I've had it one other time before um, but this is beautiful presentation it's served with a dab of wasabi on the side she said to put in some soy sauce to the bowl squeeze it with lime and just enjoy oh, wow. oh it's so tender Oh, I was expecting it to be a little more chewy. It doesn't have any kind of an off taste or anything like that. They are moving along with the courses. This one is the sukune, which I think is the type of meatball, but this is in like, almost like sausage form. Oh yeah. Oh, I can taste the yuzu on there, which is a Japanese citrus. That's so juicy as well. Oh, okay. This one is the Hinakawa. 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 Gombo. 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 Okay. Gombo. The courses mo keep moving along. I gotta, I gotta eat. This meatball is fantastic. It's like a sausage-shaped meatball. You do not need any sauce or anything on that. And moving along to my next skewer, this one is chicken gizzard. And you can see it's a little bit bloody. You can actually see like um, some little little um, like bubbles of grilled um, grilled bubbles on there and then maybe some salt that's on there. I'm a big fan of gizzard. Gizzard is one of my favorite organs. That has a nice crispness to it. It really even has a minerally taste to it. That's just like, like, like crunchy chicken. Uh, these ones look pretty, pretty fatty and pretty crunchy. I'm not sure if one of them is chicken skin, and then this one looks like the the back tail of the chicken. Looks like a, a definite mixture of fatty chicken skin, but it looks you can see those like crunchy bubbles of the of the fat words. Oh. I think that's chicken tail. Yeah, that is like like juicy fatty, but crunchy at the same time where it's been grilled. It's oily, definitely, but it's packed with flavor. You can taste the pureness of the chicken in that bite. Next skewer, and this looks, this might be the chicken skin skewer. Just skin just like crunched up onto a skewer. It's glistening. Oh wow. Oh wow. It is rich. It's crunchy. It's gooey. It's a little bit salty. You got that crispy layer from where it's been, it's been sizzled over the, the charcoal. That is, it's very greasy, but it's very tasty. And this appears to be maybe chicken thighs uh, mixed with, there's mushroom on here, and there's leek. This is just a beautiful, meaty, meaty skewer. Oh, yeah. That's just as good as it looks. Just dark meat chicken. I got a shiitake mushroom in that bite. It's smoky. It's salty. And I love how they, they use such, such little seasoning. But it's really about the technique of how he grills and about the quality of the ingredients, including the, the chicken that they're using. That's what really makes yakitori special in Japan. I was waiting for the next course. I was wondering when this was going to come because because chicken liver oh I just love chicken liver 
This is gorgeous. And you can see even how they arranged it on the on the skewers. It's like from small to bigger. Could that be a different part? I, I don't even know how they, they've just, they, they know all the anatomy of the chicken. And you can see how it's bloody. It's actually dripping with juices. Wow. Okay, that's the bite of the meal right there. Oh, it has like this kind of almost like leathery skin around the outside from being grilled. But then on the inside, it just literally like bursts. It kind of, I get a picture in my mind of like one of those, is it called a lava cake? Where you break it open and like juice, like, like, like liquid chocolate just flows out of it. That is what this liver like sort of does in your mouth. Except of course, instead of chocolate, it's liquid liver. This was a complete surprise to me. I won't ever say no to eel. And then she sprinkled on, is it pepper or some kind of spice on there? It just falls apart. And it has a wonderful, wonderful smoky flavor to it as well. Okay, next skewer, and it appears to be chicken breast, cut in nice big chunk sizes. Oh, I forgot to mention, but you can see there's some wasabi on there as well. And that's not just your average dry piece of chicken breast. It's so juicy. Oh, it just gushes with juice. Oh, and that's only half cooked chicken breast as well. You can see how raw it is on the inside. These are quail eggs. I think they're quail eggs. And what looks like, they appear to be ginkgo nuts. Oh, that's right off the grill. Oh, that's just like plain. That's just straight up quail eggs and ginkgo nuts. And this is our final course, the shiitake mushrooms. Wow, they're big and they're really big and meaty. This is how a mushroom should taste. Oh, it's so juicy and like silky, silky rubbery at the same time. We just finished with the yakitori course and come outside. I didn't even know it's raining out here. Oh, I was in like a little bit of a, a chicken paradise heaven inside there without even knowing what was going on on the, on the outside. What just amazes me so much about Japanese food in general is that how they take just simple, single ingredients like chicken and just do amazing things with it. But you know, like I'm, I'm a spice guy. I love spices. I love like overpowering spices, which Japanese food is not. But I love it because it's so, it's so precise, it's so quality, and they just focus on the single tastes of those ingredients, but they know how to enhance it so well. And yakitori is a perfect example of that Japanese cooking expertise. That was amazing. And that brings us to the end of this Japanese food tour video, including breakfast, lunch, and dinner in Tokyo. And while I was there that night, it started raining and then we had to get home. So I actually completely forgot about making an ending to this video. So I'm back at home now, uh, but that was a fantastic day. The food was amazing and it was lots of food. I'm gonna leave all of the information in the description box below, all of the restaurants I ate at and all the details so you can check that out there. And I wanna say a big thank you for watching this video. Please remember to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. I'd love to hear from you in the comment section below. And if you're not already subscribed, click subscribe now for lots more food and travel videos. And I'll see you on the next video. Thanks again for watching.